For today's video, we will be learning on how to find quadratic equation given its roots. But before that, let's try to define first a quadratic equation. It is a mathematical sentence of degree 2 that can be written in the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Our task is to determine quadratic equation given its zeros. The question is, how will we determine quadratic equation when given are its roots? With this, let's try to find out as we perform our first example. Determine a quadratic equation whose roots are 7 and 3. For finding the quadratic equation given the roots which are rational numbers, there are different methods we need to remember. First, may I present to you our first method. This is the reverse method of factoring. What will we do? Since our roots are 7 and 3, it follows that our x is equal to 7 and the second root is x equals 3. This is a result when we simplify the linear equation. x minus 7 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0 are considered to be factors when we apply the zero product property. Because both factors are equal to zero, then we can consider that quantity x minus 7 times quantity x minus 3 equals zero. In factoring, this is the step wherein we factor the given expression. Then we can simplify this by applying FOIL method. This means x times x has a product of x squared, outer terms x and negative 3, the product is negative 3x. Inner terms, negative 7 and x, the product is negative 7x. And last terms, negative 7 times negative 3, the result is positive 21. Then we will have x squared as our quadratic term. Combining our linear terms negative 3x and negative 7x, the result is negative 10x. And copy our constant which is 21 equals 0. This means our quadratic equation is x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. Another method on how to determine a quadratic equation whose roots are given is the application of the concept of sum and product of the roots. It is understood that our roots given are 7 and 3. Applying the sum of the roots, we are all aware that it has the expression negative b over a. And if roots are given, all we need to do is to add it, that is 7 and 3, the sum is 10. Since the sum of the roots has the expression negative b over a, and adding 7 and 3, the sum is 10, then we can consider that negative b over a is equal to 10. And to make the left side of our equation positive, we will multiply this by negative 1. This leads us to b over a is equal to negative 10. On the other hand, for product of the roots, it has the expression c over a. Here, as we multiply 7 and 3, the product is 21. Again, the expression c over a is the product of the roots and that is equal to 21. If we are to utilize the standard form of our quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and divide this equation by a, it leads us to x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. Here, we have the coefficient of our x, which is b over a, and our constant, which is represented by c over a. In this case, we can substitute our b over a, which is equal to negative 10, and c over a, which is equal to 21. This leads us to the quadratic equation x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. This is the quadratic equation when roots 7 and 3 are given. And if we will try to compare our answer here from our first method using the reverse of factoring, they both arrive with the quadratic equation x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals 0. Let's have our second example. Let's determine a quadratic equation whose roots are negative 8 and negative 5. Again, to utilize the first method, which is the reverse method of factoring, here, roots given are negative 8 and negative 5. This means x is equal to negative 8, and the second root is x equals negative 5. That is equivalent to x plus 8 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. This is the result 
when we apply zero product property in factoring. Since our factors x plus 8 and x plus 5 is equal to 0, this is also equal to the quantity of x plus 8 times quantity x plus 5 equals 0. Then, we will simplify our expression using the concept of FOIL method. This can be done if we multiply first our first terms x and x. The product is x squared. x times 5, we have 5x. 8 times x, the product is 8x. And 8 times 5, the product is 40. And that is equal to 0. Writing this one in standard form, we will write our quadratic term first, and that is x squared. Combining our linear terms, 5x and 8x, the sum is 13x. And copy our constant term, which is 40, equals 0. This means the quadratic equation of the roots negative 8 and negative 5 would be x squared plus 13x plus 40 equals 0. If we are to use the second method as we apply the concept of sum and product of the roots, here, let's determine the quadratic equation whose roots are negative 8 and negative 5. For us to get the sum of the roots, again, we will utilize the expression negative b over a. Since the roots are negative 8 and negative 5, adding these two, it will lead us to negative 13. So negative b over a is equal to negative 13. And to make our left side positive, we will multiply this by negative 1. So it leads us to b over a equals positive 13. While for the product of the roots, we have the expression c over a. And multiplying negative 8 and negative 5, the product is 40. This leads us to c over a is equal to 40. Again, utilizing our standard form divided by our a, it leads us to the equation x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. Substituting our b over a and c over a equals 0, our quadratic equation formulated would be x squared plus 13x plus 40 equals 0. And this is similar to the equation we had using our first method. Let's have another example. This time, let's engage our roots with a fraction. So the roots of our quadratic equation are 1 half and negative 4. So applying the first method, which is the reverse method of factoring, roots given are 1 half and negative 4. This leads us to x equals 1 half and x equals negative 4. To write this factored terms equal to 0, we will have 2x minus 1 equals 0. 2x is a result when we apply cross multiplication between x and 2. And negative 1 is a result as we transpose 1 to the left side of our equation. While x equals negative 4 can be written as x plus 4 equals 0. Then we will have quantity 2x minus 1 times quantity x plus 4 equals 0. These are the factored terms before applying the zero product property. Then to simplify this, we will apply again the idea of FOIL method as we multiply 2x and x, that is 2x squared, 2x times 4, that is 8x, negative 1 and x, we have negative x, and negative 1 times 4, we have negative 4. Again, it is equal to zero. Then to write this in standard form, we will write first the quadratic term and that is 2x squared followed by our linear terms, which is a result when we combine 8x and negative x, so that is positive 7x, and copy our third term, which is the constant term, and that is negative 4, equals 0. This would be the quadratic equation when roots are 1 half and negative 4. Let's utilize our second method, which is the application of the sum and product of the roots. Again, roots here are 1 half and negative 4. For sum of the roots, we will utilize the expression negative b over a. And adding 1 half and negative 4, rules in adding fractions make sure that we have a common denominator and we can write this as 1 minus 8 all over 2. So it leads us to negative 7 halves. So sum of 1 half and negative 4 is negative 7 halves. This leads to negative b over a equals negative 7 halves. So to write our left side positive, we will multiply this by negative 1. So b over a is equal to positive 7 halves. On the other hand, for the product of the roots, we will utilize the expression c over a. So to multiply 1 half and negative 4, it will lead us to negative 4 halves or can be simplified as negative 2. This means c over a is also equal to negative 2. 
utilizing these expressions, we will substitute this one in the equation x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. b over a is equal to 7 halves while c over a is equal to negative 2. Since our expression on the left side deals with fraction, we need to get rid of it by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. So this leads us to 2 times x squared, that is 2x squared, 2 times 7 halves x, that is 7x, and 2 times negative 2, we have negative 4, while 0 times 2, that is 0. So here, the equations form is 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 0. Let's have the fourth example. Let's determine a quadratic equation whose roots are 3 halves and negative 9 halves. So again, we will be dealing with fractions. For us to understand briefly how to determine quadratic equations whose roots are given. So utilizing the first method, which is the reverse method of factoring, so we will have the roots x is equal to 3 halves and x is equal to negative 9 halves. So x equals 3 halves can be written as 2x minus 3 equals 0, while x equals negative 9 halves can be written as 2x plus 9 equals 0. Then, Quantity 2x minus 3 times quantity 2x plus 9 are considered to be factors of our given expressions. To simplify this, we will apply FOIL method. So multiplying first terms 2x times 2x, that is 4x squared. 2x times 9, we have 18x. Negative 3 times 2x, we have negative 6x. And negative 3 times 9, we have negative 27. Again, it is equal to 0. And to write this in standard form, we will write first quadratic term, which is 4x squared, followed by our linear term, which is a result when we combine 18x and negative 6x, and that is 12x. And our constant term, which is negative 27, again, it is equal to 0. Then, the quadratic equation formed when roots are 3 halves and negative 9 halves would be 4x squared plus 12x minus 27 equals 0. And to determine the quadratic equation using our second method, wherein it is the application of the sum and product of the roots. So sum of the roots has the expression negative b over a, adding 3 halves and negative 9 halves, that is negative 6 halves, or can be simplified as negative 3. Negative b over a is equal to negative 3. To and to make our left side a positive expression, we will multiply the equation by negative 1, and that leads us to b over a is equal to positive 3. While, for the product of the roots, we have the expression c over a. Multiplying 3 halves and negative 9 halves will lead us to negative 27 all over 4. This means c over a is equal to negative 27 over 4. Substitute b over a and c over a in the equation x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals 0, where b over a is equal to 3 and c over a is equal to negative 27 all over 4. Again, our equation deals with fractions. So to get rid of our denominator 4, we will multiply the equation by 4. So 4 times x squared will have a product of 4x squared. 4 times 3x will have a product of 12x. While 4 times negative 27 all over 4 will lead us to negative 27. While 0 times 4, the product is 0. Here, the quadratic equation formed when the roots are 3 halves and negative 9 halves would be 4x squared plus 12x minus 27 equals 0. What will happen if the roots are an irrational number, just like in our next example? If we will to determine the quadratic equation whose roots are 1 plus and minus square root of 3 all over 2, what would be our method? And what would be our solution? Here, the roots given would be 1 plus and minus square root of 3 all over 2. Still, we can apply the concept of the reverse method of factoring and at the same time, applying the concept of sum and product of the roots. Allow me to present another method which is considered a convenient way if our roots are irrational numbers. So first thing that we will do is to apply cross multiplication as we multiply x and 2. So it will lead us to 2x is equal to 1 plus and minus square root of 3. The constant 1 on the right side of our equation will be transposed to the left side using subtraction property of equality. And that eliminates 1 on the right side of our equation which leads us to 2x minus 1 is equal to positive negative square root of 3. Then, we will square both sides of the equation as we eliminate the radical symbol on the right side of our equation. 
And if we notice, the left side becomes a square of a binomial. And we've learned that we can expand square of a binomial as a perfect square trinomial. This means quantity 2x minus 1 squared can be written as 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And that is equal to 3. If we notice, we get rid also with the positive and negative symbol. Why? Because a positive number that is being squared, the result is positive. And a negative number that is being squared also, we lead us also to a positive result. So this is the reason why we eliminate the positive and negative symbol. To simplify, we need to transpose 3 to the left side of our equation using, again, subtraction property of equality. Then, let us simplify our equation, and that is 4x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 0. This means the quadratic equation formulated whose roots are 1 plus and minus square root of 3 all over 2 is 4x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 0. Another example. Let's determine the quadratic equation whose roots are negative 2 plus and minus square root of 2 all over 3. Again, roots here are negative 2 plus and minus square root of 2 all over 3. So first, we need to apply cross multiplication as we multiply x and 3. So we have 3x is equal to negative 2 plus and minus square root of 2. Then, transpose negative 2 to the left side of our equation using addition property of equality as we eliminate negative 2 on the right side of our equation. So we will have 3x plus 2 is equal to positive negative square root of 2. Then, we will square both sides of the equation as we eliminate radical symbol on the right side of our equation. Quantity 3x plus 2 squared is a square of a binomial and can be expanded into a perfect square trinomial as we square the first term. 3x squared will lead us to 9x squared. 3x times 2, that is 6x, times 2, that is positive 12x. And for the third term, that is square of 2, which is equal to 4. And again, it is equal to positive 2. Transpose 2 to the left side of our equation using subtraction property of equality. Our equation formulated becomes 9x squared plus 12x plus 2 equals 0. This is the quadratic equation whose roots are negative 2 plus and minus square root of 2 all over 3. This time, it is your turn. Determine the quadratic equation whose roots are given. First, negative 7 and negative 6. Second, 5 and 11. Third, 4 fifths and 2 fifths. Fourth, negative 2 plus and minus 5 square root of 2 all over 3. And 1 plus and minus square root of 5 all over 2. There you have it. Hope you learned something new today. God bless us all.